Welcome back to Lane's ED Enhancement channel. First, let me thank all those who visit, view, like, share, and also subscribe, which is very important, to my first video. Now, today we are going to be looking at weight and conversion factors. Now, these are some of the main ones that are used in the shipping industry and also in some of the courses that I lecture. Today we are going to particularly be looking at two systems, the metric versus the imperial system. Now, the objectives of today's video are weight, container weights, ships, tonnages, grain and bale capacities, conversion factors, storage factor, metric, and the imperial storage factor formula. Now, these are all fundamental to understanding how much cargo a container or a ship's hull can safely carry. Also, it allows us to toggle or move between the metric and the imperial weights and measurements. First, container and cargo weight. Now let us look first at tear weight. Now, tear weight is the weight as indicated in this diagram of the empty container. We then have net weight. Net weight is the weight of the actual cargo after it has been packed in a container. Total weight of the cargo. When we combine both of them, as you can see, tear weight plus net weight gives us gross weight. Now, gross weight is what is primarily used in the shipping industry. Now let us look at another very important aspect. VGM or verified gross mass. Now what is verified gross mass? VGM became relevant in the shipping industry as persons were given weights that were not correct. Weights that did not reflect the actual weight of their cargo. And so Solas decided that yes, every shipment must be certified by a certifying body after it has been weighed and the actual or the certified weight, the VGM placed on the manifest and also the cargo plans. Payload, very important. This is the maximum weight that a container can safely carry. And it does not include the tear weight. It's just the maximum weight that the container was designed to carry. Now let us look at ship tonnages. As you can see, the net tonnage, which is the measure of the total interior volume of the ship's cargo space, space that is available and designed to carry cargo, which is what produces the revenue from the actual venture. Then we have the gross tonnage, which is measurement of the overall interior volume of the vessel. Then we have light weight tonnage. Now this is the weight of the ship with the framework, machinery, decking, etc. without any of the variables. Now what are the variables? The variables are, are what makes up the overall dead weight, which is the total weight 
a ship can safely carry. These variables include cargo, fuel, supplies, crew, provision, etc. Everything that is loaded on the vessel. Now it is very important that we do not exceed the dead weight certified by the shipbuilders. This could lead to danger of sinking or damage to the actual vessel. Let us now look at two capacities, grain and bale capacities. First, grain capacity. This is a particular cargo hold. With grain capacity, which is the measurement overall from the total volumetric space that is available for all bulk cargo, all bulk cargo, not only grain. And as you can see, it is measured from one side to the other of the vessel. In other words, it takes up the complete compartment. Let us now look at bale capacity. Utilizing the same cargo hold, we, when we are going to load bale, we would normally use sparse ceilings or sweat boards which are placed on the floor of the vessel and on the sides. Now these are placed there to pre prevent the actual cargo from resting on the sides of the vessel which can produce ship sweat and causes damage to the actual cargo. Now, conversion factors. We are going to be looking at some conversion factors. Now, this allows us to easily move between the different systems. These systems might become necessary as some countries uses the imperial system while others uses the metric system. Some countries even uses both systems. And since international shipping is fundamental to trade, then it becomes very important that we know some of these conversion factors. First, we have one metric ton, which is equal to 1,000 kilograms. We have one short ton, which is normally used in the US, which is equal to 2,000 pounds. We have one long ton, which is equal to 2,240 pounds. Then we have one metric ton in terms of pounds is equal to 2,204.62 pounds. We have one meter which is equal to 3.2808 feet and one cubic meter which is 35.313 cubic feet. Now throughout our exercises we'll be using some of these factors interchangeably. Now let us look at storage factor. Storage factor, as you can see from the formula, is the volume divided by the weight. Sometimes we just break it down as S equal V divided by W. Now being able to calculate storage factor allows us to determine how much of a particular cargo can be stored, stored, packed into any type of container. So the storage factor is very important for the loading of cargo in various means of transportation as it indicates the amount of a particular cargo that can go into the old either the volume or the weight will be the limiting factor. And so the storage factor of any cargo is its stored volume per unit of weight it occupies, inclusive of any donage material needed 
and also the form and design of the packages. Let's bear that in mind. Not only just the weight and the volume, but also inclusive of any donage material that is needed and also the design and the form of the packages. Now converting between the metric and the imperial storage factor. As you know, this again is going to be very important. A metric storage factor to an imperial storage factor. As I get seen, some countries uses both or some uses either, it will become necessary as we trade. The unit for metric storage factor is cubic meters per metric tons. And for imperial storage factor, it's cubic feet per long tons. Here, we have one cubic meter, 35.313 cubic feet times a factor of 1.016, which is one long ton, 2240 pounds, divided by a metric ton, which is 2,204.62 pounds and we get 35.878. Bring it to two decimal places, we can use 35.88. This factor is what we will use when we are converting between these two storage factors. So if you have a metric storage factor and you want to bring it to an imperial storage factor, you would multiply by the 35.878. Likewise, you can transpose. And if you want the storage factor to be metric and you are given the storage factor in imperial values, then you will divide that by the 35.88 when you're converting. Now let us look at formulas to calculate storage factor. When given imperial measurements, and these imperial measurements might include cubic feet, pounds. You want to calculate the storage factor of that specific or particular cargo, then you will use this formula, where the storage factor would be equal to 2,240 pounds times the volume in cubic feet divided by the cargo weight in pounds. Repeating, storage factor is, is equal to 2,240 pounds times the volume in cubic feet and you will divide that by the cargo weight in pounds. Now, when you are given metric measurements, and these would include cubic meters and kilograms, and you want to find a storage factor, a metric storage factor, then you will use this formula. Storage factor equal 1,000 kilograms times the volume in cubic meters divided by the cargo weight in kilograms. Repeating, storage factor in metric would be 1,000 kilograms times the volume in cubic meters, and you will divide that by the cargo weight in kilograms. In concluding, please join me in my next video. There, we are going to utilize some of these formulas in solving the scenarios. A couple of scenarios that we come upon in the shipping industry and some that are given in the classroom. So please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you next time. Stay blessed.